Hi everyone, happy Sunday. We decided we're gonna go live a little bit early today. Um, we're kind of like, we had nothing to do. So I was like, let's just go early instead of going late. So today we're gonna be making a Magnolia Welcome Wreath. So a um, lot of really cool patterns and prints. Plus, I've had this deco mesh that I got at Joann's and I've been wanting to see how well this works on a wreath. So we're gonna see how that goes today. Um, this was, I think, when did this come out? I wanna say this came out during Easter, I think, because a lot of this color um, went on sale. So I picked up a couple rolls of this. So um, we're using this as our base color for this design. Um, I thought that it paired really well. So the sign is a 10 inch sign, a welcome magnolia wreath from <coughs> Pam at Personalize It by Pam. I already have my 14 inch uh, wreath frame already set up as is standard. I didn't think we needed to go over it one more time, but here it is just in case. It is six pipe cleaners placed on the inside two rails between every section so six on the inside two, and then on the outside of each section, there's two, um, giving that a grand total of 12 to the outside. So six and 12 gives us a total total of 18. So we're using the deco mesh. This is cut to 20 inch pieces. Um, the downside to this deco mesh is the length. So, um, the quantity in the roll is only 18 feet, which is interesting because if you guys know, most of our deco mesh rolls come in 30 foot rolls. That's what we consider a full roll. So these are kind of a little bit of a half. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave my pipe cleaners in the middle. I'm thinking we probably won't. So if we don't do that, let me go ahead and take these out anyway. Because um, if we decide to change that up, we can always add more to it later. If this is your first time joining, let me know. And also let me know where you're from. I'd like to see where you guys are all at. Plus, it sometimes helps you make crafting connections with other crafters um, that you meet on Facebook Lives. For YouTube subscribers, this is gonna be a replay um, of an earlier Facebook Live. So you can feel free to leave comments. I do go through and make sure that I answer any of the questions that you might have, even though you can't participate in the live. But if you decide you wanna participate in the live, come join my Facebook page. It's at Cats Creations Reese. So we're just gonna lay these in and see how well this mesh works. I got it in two different colors. There's a blue that I'm gonna be using in an ocean wreath or like a nautical wreath. So we'll see how this one turns out before we break into the other two. So you might've seen this at Joann's on the clearance. You might've looked at it and went, oh, that's only uh, 18 feet. No, I'm not gonna do it. But if you wait and you get it at a fairly good sales price, um, it might be worthwhile. It definitely isn't at $9.99 a pop for only 18 feet, because that's not gonna be enough for you to use um, just one roll. You're gonna always need to use at least two. With this, it also has a uh, fabric in it. So this has to be cut with a rotary cutter. It's a little on the thinner side for mesh, as far as mesh goes. But I like the color combination, so we'll see if that works. all the way around just like so 
So I felt magnolias were pretty universal. They could be year round. They could be summer design. Sometimes you're just looking for something to put on your door. halfway no not quite okay let's get in to the center Hope everybody's having a great Sunday it's so hard to believe that the weekends already come and gone all unstuck there we go now it's all unstuck put this one we're gonna on yeah we got them she got the mess this year at uh joanne's joanne's yeah. yep there's only 18 feet so you have to watch it yeah, yeah it was on sale not that long ago so i just picked this up Probably like right when they launched their spring line because these yeah. felt like spring colors. So it does stick to each other because if, it's hard to see, but it doesn't even have like <clears throat> a really thick plastic. It's almost like a wafer thin clear. So the emphasis is just on the color of the cotton threads. And I've had a couple of people tell me they don't like it, that they're not a fan of this mesh. So I thought I'd give it a whirl and see how it would work. So we should see. Overlap those. Okay. I like the colors though. I think the color palette's nice. The moss green, the tan, and like a cream. So this design, I have featured eight ribbons that is gonna get used in this one. So when I'm placing my mesh in, I am placing that so that the finished edges are facing the inside part of the frame this way and on the outside. That way it'll keep it from fraying too much. Make sure that's down far enough. Sometimes I have a tendency of going a little heavy on the top and I don't put enough at the bottom. So we're focusing a little bit more on that, making sure I'm really bringing it down. So I'm getting exactly half into my deco mesh. Taking this one. Okay, school's almost out. People are busy making their summer plans. How many of you are going on vacation this summer? You were thinking about it, but right now everything I don't like the availability of what's available out there. And everything is, like Stu says, super expensive. It's like the price of even, you know, 
vacation places to stay are super yeah, expensive. Yeah, we know. You go on a cruise like every month. <laughs> she does not. Steve's just jealous. You couldn't have gone anyway. You were totally sick. That's the scary thing. Making reservations and then you never know. Somebody can come down with something and then those plans are out the window. Barbara, there are, the mesh is cut to 20 inches. Yeah, it was easy to do on this because I was already cutting into the second roll of mesh so I could be quite generous. Right, Ruby in the white in the mesh almost does look like that magnolia. It kind of does. Yeah. I think when I first got the sign in, I saw the mesh sitting on my shelf and I was like, oh, that, I think that, that would be a really good um, sign for this color palette. So that's what I'm doing. A little bit something softer. Okay. Three more pieces. She says she's going to the convention with her wrist seal in time. Oh, that's right. Linda says no vacation for me. She's got that her replacement surgery this week. We'll be praying for you. Oh, see? She said she went to the Oregon Coast last in March. See, that sounds perfect. I would love it there. There's a lot to do up in Oregon. But then if you're planning summer vacations, for us here on the West Coast, that generally involves a huge forest fire somewhere. So we've had to, we've made several plans for summer vacations um, only to have those plans changed with the onset of a uh, fire. So I was pulling these yeah. ones apart. Is that yeah, that's a good question. She said, I have a customer that received her wreath mm -hmm. yesterday and she said a few of the greenery came off and being shipped. What can I do to accommodate her? You can offer to give her a small refund if you want. Maybe that's just gonna, um, yeah, you could do a 10%. That's yeah. usually, yeah. Glue gun, so you glue it on mm -hmm. I've had somebody like I've shipped a wreath sometime. Uh, it's only happened once, but the starfish came off of the actual like aluminum sign, and she was fine with gluing it back on. She was just looking for a small compensation, so I gave her ten percent. She was like, "That's good. I'll just glue it back on." So I would start there. Because honestly, I mean, the artificial granary, we don't assemble them, you know, we just put them on. Um, let's see if we can get this one in. Now we can get it in, I just don't want it to cling. She's having surgery on her wrist tomorrow. Mm-hmm. A lot of people having surgery. We're praying for you to tell you that surgery goes good and heals up. Okay, so there is our design. Judy, welcome to the group. She says, I'm new to watching you from California. Hey, where are you at in California? We were also from Southern California, from Bukuville. So now we're gonna go in and we're gonna add in our ribbon. So we're doing two and a half inch with magnolias. And then we're doing two and a half in a moss green and tan plaid both cut to 14 inch pieces. We're gonna alternate these. So we're just gonna take these, place these right on the inside, give it a couple twists. You're gonna pop the underside of your ribbon tails and just kind of fan those to the outside. So that's the look we are trying to achieve all the way around. So we shall see. Trying to be really ginger with the mesh. Okay. Ginger. Trying to be very delicate, gentle, not pulling my mesh when it sticks. Sometimes you've seen me take the scissors 
just because those little, the edges can catch on the smallest of fibers. Our desire is to take it and pull it, but um, that can lead to your mesh coming. Nancy, yeah, she did uh, 6 Chanel on the inside and 12 on the outside of the Dollar Tree print. Yep. Okay, go in here and do the same thing. I'm just taking the end right here and twisting it flat so that I can open that up. Didn't want to go too white on this design. This sign's going to pop most of the green in, so you're going to see me come in with some other greens, that moss colored. Let's grab my pipe cleaner, hiding. Right, Lisa, I like the natural look. You don't get tired of it, and it can stay out most of the year. Yes, Very true. that's exactly it. Mm -hmm. So this would be what's called an everyday wreath. You can leave this up in between um, yeah. the seasonal holidays. Like you could um, put this up, then um, do your patriotic wreath, take that down, put this back up till the fall. Suzanne, the mesh cat bought at Joann's or on Easter time. And they were 18 feet pieces, so you just have to make sure you buy a couple of them. 18 foot them. rolls. It, it, yeah, 18 foot rolls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You always got to watch the measurements on a lot of the retail store mesh because um, they'll still charge you the same price. You know, it's still like retail was $9.99 for only 18 feet. Michaels does that a lot too. So. Thank you. I ordered the Magnolia ribbon just so I'd have that back on hand. It's kind of nice to have that in your inventory because you can do that on a grapevine. You can do it in a, um, see, I'm trying to get these ones. Like this one's stuck way down at the bottom. There we go. Bring it back up to the front. How in the heck it got so twisted way down? Don't know. Place this on the inside. Pop it out. And then do the same here. I'm always super excited once I cut all my materials to see how does that look all put together. So pop them underneath and then they just pop back out, lay flat. Otherwise they stay flat. They like um, indent because naturally when you put them in here, See how right now they're indent? They're like kind of go down. You want to take your fingers and stick them under the underside and pop them up. Then they'll lay nice. Last one for our magnolia. Squeezing this one in. Those popped. There we go. And then last one is right in here. There we go. Take and tuck that in. So here's this one. Pop this out, and I want the magnolias to be on the top because the yeah, other's just like a generic plaid, whereas the other is really pretty magnolia print. Just 
just really clings to everything. Trying to pull that whole center section up. There we go. Okay, now let's add the inch and a half. These are cut to 19 inch pieces. We have a canvas and green stripe. And then we have, um, <sighs> trying to think, it's a moss green with raised white stitching is exactly what it's called. Both 19 inch pieces, the, this one here is from Personally Yours. She's at plresigns.com. And then this green and white stripe is from Greenery Market. It came in a ribbon bundle uh, for fall. So we're gonna be utilizing this. And I think, how did I wanna do this? Kind of pairing these. I'm always like, oh, this looks good on either or. <clears throat> I think the green and white. I think I want to put that on the magnolia and then just put the moss green because this is a really good quality ribbon. It's really thick. It feels almost like um, the webbing you put on your lawn chairs. It's really thick canvas. So we're going to place this on our magnolias. We'll snip this off. Tuck it around back. I'm gonna go ahead and open that. And then we've always got a right side, one part of our ribbon. Make sure that the magnolia still is, can be seen. So that's super pretty. <clears throat> It'll still emphasize that entire design. So to make a half bow, you bring your 19 inch piece together, um, tails together. You're gonna pinch in about two inches from the top. Um, no, you need to go, buddy. You need to go. I know, it's not that time though. Go that way, bud. Okay, so tuck it right behind. Then you're gonna open up your loop and right side one of those tails, just like that. We want magnolia on top, so just like that. What do you guys think of the color? <clears throat> the color combination. Squish in. Two. Juicy three. And all my ribbon just fell on the floor. I don't know how that happened. It's always sometimes hard getting that last little edge. To go back over. There we go. Okay. So we'll tuck this one in. Snip this off. There we go. Tuck this behind, open that up. Right side our piece. We'll go under. I like the colors on this. Keeping with the tan, the white and the green. Yeah, Jamie said those are her favorite colors. These colors? Yeah. Yeah, I like these. Like you said, they're earthy, they go all year round, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because this can trend into early fall. It's even kind of a farmhouse. 
It is. You could definitely go that way. Yeah, you could add like little pieces of raffia to this to make it feel more rustic. We're not going to embellish this one at all. We're just adding our ribbons, our tails, our sign, and a big bow. And that's pretty much it for this one. We're going to keep it really simple. Um, you could, I guess, if you wanted to embellish with a magnolia, but all the magnolias I see are super huge and that from a dimension perspective, it just is way too big. Look, I even brought one to show Steve. I'm all, it's just way too big, way too big. So that would compete with the size of the bow and it would just be way too much. about two-thirds of the way done. There we go. <clears throat> cool. I find too, when I find favorite ribbon, like the green with the raised white stitching, I always try to find it in 50 or 100 yard rolls because I generally will use that ribbon all year long. It'll go in spring, it'll go in summer, fall, and even Christmas. Yeah, Holly, the size of the magnolia is a two and a half inch and she cut the tails to 14 inches. Mm -hmm. Six of them. Mm hmm six of each. You see little plastic things sticking out, so I'm snipping those off. Okay. Yeah, I think we're going to start doing some more uh, transitional wreaths, like summer to fall florals like we did with the Monarch. We're gonna do some that are um, like a moss green to orange. Mm -hmm. Open, get that reseated, push this one back under, just like that. Super excited to see this one when it's finished. It's gotta be the same for sign makers too, because you know, you're making a sign not knowing what kind of design that's gonna look like when it's finished. We'll place you under. Two more to go. Then we'll start our bow. So the Magnolia ribbon, that was from Craft Outlet. Mm -hmm. And I believe the green and tan plaid was also Craft Outlet. Oh yes, both from Craft Outlet. So that'll tuck around the back. Open. Pull this back up to the top. This one's being a little finicky. 
doesn't want to sit right. Okay. Judy, yeah, that's usually cat's go-to store. Crap out of it. The reason why, low minimum to meet free shipping. It's only $69. Price point is great, and their shipping is super fast. Yeah, yeah, that's their shipping is perfect. Usually, like for me, being all the way on the West Coast, <clears throat> It generally takes me, like if I order on a Monday, I get it by Friday. If I order it like Friday, it's generally probably still Friday. Because I always order late and they've probably already gone home. Where are they at again? Like, Virginia, I Virginia. think. Yeah. I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, there we go. Wanted to make sure these are all on top. Yeah, okay. This, this, I think the magnolia floor would be pretty with some kind of white pink. It could. Floor. Yeah. Most definitely could. Okay, I'm going to take this and set this to the side. I'm going to grab my Bodabra. And we're doing all inch and a half. So this is a 10 inch round, which means it's not going to occupy a lot. So it gives me an opportunity to really like um, make a smaller more size appropriate bow. So we're gonna use a uh, inch and a half uh, Swiss dot on the moss green. We've got our um, stripe. We have our raised white stitching. We have um, a beige with the polka dots to bring that cream back in. And then we have um, a brown, tan, and green. So we're going to introduce just a touch of the brown because you can see it's in here in the leaves. And then a green and tan gingham. So, eeks, didn't want them to go too far. Let's see how we want to break these up. Jamie, since you came in late, uh, Jamie, that mesh is from Joanna. Cat bought it back in Easter. There might still be some available. I think I'm going to break these ones up like that. So that's kind of how I want them stacked. So I'm going to take these ones, set those to the side. So we're going to use this one first. Same bow making formula. So it's going to be, um, what do you call it? A 10 inch tail, five and a half inch loop. But we've got a dovetail first. So folded edges together. You're going to cut from the folded side to the wired point, just like so. We're going to measure off 10 inches. We're going to gather that and then twist it. And then that's going to go right inside the Bodabra. We're going to take our Bodabra, put it back on the 10 because it's easy to measure out five and a half, which is exactly what that length is. Measure again, five and a half. Boop. That one's way too short. There we go. And back out to our tan. Dovetail again. That one's done. That we're gonna do our beige white dot. This ribbon is from Sam's. So this is one of those Sam's ribbons, spraying ribbons from this year. So just something a little bit different. This one's gonna be nine and a half inches with a five inch loop. So all the way around. Gonna try to always guesstimate and then just measure to make sure. Up and around, measure right at five and then out to nine and a half. There we go. 
done. Okay. Okay. Let's the canvas. This one's going to be nine inch tail with a four and a half inch loop. Rubina, yeah, cat decided to go kind of early today. So I was just sitting around with nothing to do. I'm like, I'm just going to go live early. Because sometimes the people on the East Coast, that's a little, that could be a little bit late. You know, it goes from nine to 10. So I just thought, oh, I'll go early. So four and a half. Aww. Make sure. Yep. And then back out to nine. Sometimes it's good to just change things up. It's kind of like when we do our pop-up lives, unscheduled. Sometimes it's a nice surprise. Okay, our tan, tan and brown. This is from personally yours as well. I'm gonna cut my folded edge off because I hate those. But I like the colors in this one. This one you have to be super careful of though when you're fluffing it as you pull it because all three of those colors are just glued together. So this one's going to be eight and a half inches with a four and a half inch loop, same as our green. So because we've already measured that one, we can put our finger in it, give it a slight pull, stretch this out. James, I appreciate it earlier when we were getting into that one. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm thinking is a lot of people are like, they go to bed early. Uh, Arena has is a market greenery ribbon expensive. Yeah, I think it's around the It's expensive. Price. Is it expensive? Yes, it does not come sold single by the roll. Mm -hmm. They come in bundles and they're expensive. Like $25 for three rolls expensive. Mm -hmm. So very expensive but you can totally tell it's really good quality ribbon too. So the gingham is from Kringle Designs. This again is another <clears throat> year round color for me because this is almost like uh, the moss green with the stitching. You can use it anytime. So eight inches for our tail length and then four inches for the loop. Let's see, did we get four? A little heavy. Up and over. I always have to be careful so I don't pull the material from the other side as well. Okay. Let's get that all seated right. Okay. This one's almost done. And the last one is our Swiss Dot, and this is from <clears throat> Pinky Jub Designs. She's on Etsy, but you can get this from Craft Outlet, pretty much just about anyone. This last one's going to be seven and a half inches for our tail length and three and a half inches for our loop length. So we need to bring that in. There's three and a half. Three and a half is really small. You know, it has to be a half inch shorter than this right there and then seven and a half
Okay. Pin, down, dovetail. Tired already, huh? When what? Mm. Okay, we are going to Let's see if I have. Do I have the moss covered? Yes, I do. Grab the wrong one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a moss colored pipe cleaner instead of the beige. It'll just look nicer. We're going to pick the whole thing up, slide our pipe cleaner down. We're going to hold it at the end of our stack and we're going to twist. Twist the stack. So much easier doing it that way. Okay. Fluffy board. There we go. Just like so. Okay, we are going to slide my pipe cleaner under my hook. If I can get it in there. There it goes. So that just keeps it from sliding off the board. So that we're going to separate tails from their loop. So there's the top stack separated a tail loop. On the opposite side, you're going to go opposite. So you're going to take your tail. Pull it this way, and our loop is going towards the left. That way, we have loops and tails opposite of each other, and we're going to do that all the way down our stack, just separating loops from tails. If you forget, just look at the one on the top. So there's our tail, there's our loop, and then it just is going to stagger that effect all the way down. I'm going to separate these right now so I don't do green on top of green. I'm just going to do them separate. And you can do that. Just remember whatever you do at the top, you have to do at the bottom. Yeah, so your bows are always perfect. Oh, thank you. I still struggle so much with my bows. Well, you know, Ken has a lot of bow making videos out there that you can keep watching. And my best recommendation is <clears throat> keep your bow material, like when you're making your loops and your tails on both sides, keep them exactly the same. I know people are like, eh, you can kind of just gauge it. There, It's like a recipe, right? You can make slight alterations in the recipe. Sometimes it turns out good. Sometimes it doesn't. But if you want to taste it, if you want it to taste the way that somebody made it, you follow the recipe. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're just kind of following a recipe of what works. So again, everything opposite. And the last one, we're going loop, tail. We've got to do opposites. And so as you can see right now, nothing is fluffed. It literally is everything is flat on the board. So you have some options because you're the designer. You decide what you want the end product to look like. You can take some of your tails and integrate them in here with your loops and vice versa. I like to keep all my tails together because when I'm looking at the placement of the sign, I've got magnolias here. I've got the welcome. I can't really impact because I want that to be seen. So I can slightly come in here and take out some of the magnolia because you still have the bottom one in here. So having the tails where I want them to be allows me to have them go up and around the sign and a little bit towards the bottom. So that's why I separate them that way. But then from here, you're just gonna grab your top two, put your fingers inside the loops. So technically you could ship bot like bows like this and just teach customers how to fluff it's just put your fingers in the loops, pull up, you know, open them up just like that. You can start to see life. And then <clears throat> you're looking at like what comes next. So I'm like, oh, I really like how that tri-colored ribbon 
looks really nice in between. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to make sure that comes up right in between these two. And then I kind of like how the green and cream kind of comes in between those two. So I'll make sure that happens on this side, just like that. And we'll take the beige with the dot and bring it over here. Same thing. We're going to bring that over here. And then finally, we have our raised white stitching. I'm pulling that down right in between these two, kind of like how I'd like it to go. So in between these. So again, lift, fluff. Everything is lifted. Now we need to get it up off the board. Now we need to put that height in it. This is where if you get really good quality ribbon, it makes the difference in your bows. Because if you have really thick wire in there, it's going to stay where you have it open. Like the Sam's Club ribbon has very thin wire and it's a thin ribbon. So, you know, you kind of have to manipulate and play with it a little bit. And then we want to put our, the way our arcs fall in our ribbon tails. So it's just like that old fashioned curling ribbon technique. You're just going to run it through your fingers. Marianne, all your bows and weeps are gorgeous. Oh, thanks, Maria. Marianne. Marianne, yes. thanks. So we'll split these up. And then that's just where you kind of play with colors, patterns, where your ribbon tails fall if you want to cut ribbon any shorter you can definitely do that but pretty much there is your bow just like that um so you could take a picture if you were selling just the bow like this the board makes a nice stage for it um i'm gonna slide this off put this away and then we are going to pop holes in our sign because here's our wreath base. So here is that magnolia. So it's going to kind of trend right in here, right around these edges here, just like that. And then our bow is going to go right about, let me fix this, right about here. We'll bring it off to the side a little bit, but something like that. That's how it's going to finish. So we need to attach our sign. So I'm going to pop a hole down here and one up here, or we could actually go side to side. Let's do that. So 1.5 millimeter pull punch. That's all you need. You can order them from Amazon, the company who makes the metal hole punch pliers that I use is Beadsmith. You could also go to Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, wherever they have their jewelry making, and that's where you're gonna get your metal hole punch from. And I'm just using floral wire. You could use a pipe cleaner. You could use the what are they, adhesive cable tie, little squares. I don't generally put them on a metal sign because they could come loose. Putting a hole in it guarantees it's not going to come loose. So I'm going to poke that through. Going to even it out. And then I'm going to build on the back. That way my wire doesn't stick out towards the side. Do it again on this side. Build from the back right over the hole.
we are going to attach this right in here. So with that, I'm gonna lift these up. These are some of my inside pieces. I'm gonna go in and attach this right to my frame. Pull this over. And I wanna just lightly figure out how deep do I want that to go. And then just give it a couple twists because you need to come over here and make sure um, that you can go ahead and square that up. And this is sitting right over one of my inside pipe cleaners, so that's great. Making sure. Trying to even these up. There we yeah, go. Yeah, I kind of had to go a little early today. Yeah, we didn't have anything to do. It's a hot day here, so I was like, oh, let's go early. Okay, that one's all together. Now we want to soften. Let me make sure these are all We want to soften our sign, all the little hairs. Do this around here. This is why I was pulling some of my mesh back already, because I knew like this one was gonna pull. Judy, this is on cat standard. Uh, 14 inch Dollar Tree frame that she would like to use. There's that one. Okay, open, open. Let's get this to feather. So I'm going to grab the one right here in the front. You can see how everything is just so overly clingy with this mesh. It's great once it stays in place because it'll hold itself together but um, not in the interim. It's just all those little plastic ends just holding on for dear life. So we gotta get that up. This up, this left. There we go. So it just softens the hard line around that sign Pop these open. This side, right where our bow's gonna go, we kinda wanna tuck that down because um, we need a landing spot for a bow. So I'm gonna kinda take this, kinda give it a, a home to sit on because I don't want my bow to be pushed up. So. We're going to take this one and I'm looking at like where I need my loops to fall. Got to get all that pipe cleaners down through all the plastic. This is why I'm such a fan of floral wire because all it takes is one small little piece of plastic and that keeps everything from laying where you want it to be. Okay. So let's go ahead and pull my bow down and then we'll fluff the ribbons around. So up and over. Just like so. Check that under. Just so we can see our sign. And then we have our tails. So I'm trying to get them to lay more flat on my sign. They wanna just 
grab on to the ribbon and take a ride. No worries. Okay, let's tuck this one down so we can get this loop to lay right in here. All the little fingers. There we go. Open everything else up. Let's make sure all of our half bows and our tails are where they need to be, but I think we're all finished. So see how big this flower would just be in, comp in comparison to this? It would really just, it's too big. It's literally the size of the bow with all the loops put together. So another day for that, it'll find a home in another creation. But I hope you guys have enjoyed the live, the earlier live, and that um, I've given you another design choice to use. This is already available on your site? No, it's not. Nope, not yet. I'm trying to get all the little fibers out of the way. But there you guys have it. It's all set, ready to go. Any other questions you guys have? Other than that, have a very blessed week. And I will talk to you guys next week. Have a great Sunday and start of your work week, everyone.